What's up s'mores? I'm Shannon Morris. Welcome to my YouTube channel all about travel and technology and today I do have a security and privacy video for you. Oh do I. I have a little bit of a bone to pick with all of these DNA testing websites that are giving away these free DNA tests. I just am not happy with them and I have a lot of reasons why and I hope by the end of this video you will agree with me. So you've probably seen DNA tests for sale in all sorts of retail stores, big box stores. You've probably seen them online advertised in your Instagram feed or your Twitter feed or you You've probably seen them as well on Amazon and different places like that for really, really cheap prices as well. And everybody seems so interested in using these, but you should not get a DNA test. You should not buy them for your family members either. And I am so sorry if you already have for Christmas, hopefully you have a refund available to you if you take it back to the store. Now, I totally understand why people want to do DNA tests. I do. I mean, I have had that curiosity as well. I am extremely curious about my family's heritage, my family's past. I think it would be amazing to hear about that kind of history, to hear about where my grandparents came from, to hear about all this information from people who have passed away. I mean, it's kind of like a living story that you can learn about your own self and just in that fact alone, it's so fascinating. But it also offers peace of mind too if you're worried about health problems or if you just want to confirm if something runs in your family. You can do that through DNA testing. Is it accurate? Well, it kind of depends on how many other people have given their DNA testing or their genome sequencing over to these different companies. But the problem is all of these DNA testing companies are absolutely horrendous when it comes to privacy. I mean, how much is the security of your DNA worth? Who are you willing to share that information with? You can't change your DNA sequence once it out, once it's out in the world and maybe gets leaked. So this is something that you should hold private as much as extremely possible. I'm also very, very skeptical about why these companies are making them so, so cheap. And I'm wondering if it's just to get more people in their library or if there is some kind of profit happening on the back end and that's why they want to get more people using the DNA tests. I mean, allegedly, I don't know any of this for truth, but I do have some very crucial, some very factual examples of why I don't want to get DNA testing ever done with any of these third party companies that just do the mail order DNA testing with like a swab of your cheek. All of it's very creepy and my concerns are not based on having no evidence whatsoever. So take MyHeritage.com who a couple years ago they had 92 million account details just sitting on a server outside of their company. It contained usernames, encrypted passwords, luckily no DNA was stored on the same server so that was not leaked, but usernames and passwords were. And because of this, MyHeritage did implement two-factor authentication, but this kind of leak should not have happened in the first place. Companies like MyHeritage, 23andMe, Ancestry.com, all of them do this third-party direct-to-consumer testing. So they mail you these boxes, you do the cheek swab, and then you send it back in, and then they give you some kind of updated profile on their website that allows you to see information about your DNA. The scary part is a lot of these companies just do not have good privacy policies, or if they do, they're kind of vague or they don't have any kind of specific guidelines for storage principles either for the physical DNA. There are no set guidelines as far as how long they can keep DNA data in storage and there's no specific guidelines on what companies have to do if you ask them to destroy that data after using it to test your own DNA sequencing. Also, none of these companies have to abide by HIPAA privacy laws like other medical fields do, so they could conduct research on your genetic data, they can sell it, they could share it with third parties, as long as their terms of service say that they can. And the chances of consumers actually reading terms of service is so slim as it is, 
you might have already agreed to that by signing up on their website. So hypothetically, if some kind of company or employer had access to the DNA testing uh, outlets, like all of these ones that do the direct to consumer testing, then you could have like employers or insurance companies that could easily, easily find out about different uh, mental illnesses or cancer that might run in the family, or they could find ab out about disorders, or they could find out about substance problems or what kind of ethnicity you are. Arguably, they could discriminate against you. Now, with that said, they're not supposed to. There is a law called the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, GINA for short, that keeps them from discriminating against you. But that's assuming that you know that discrimination is happening. So how can you report it if the data is shared in secret closed door agreements, for example? How could you report it if you don't know that you're being discriminated against or they use some kind of other excuse to not hire you in the first place or to fire you or not accept you on some kind of insurance policy? Now, GINA does not apply to life insurance, disability insurance, or long-term care insurance either. So any of those could be denied to you because of genetic information. Then we have the example of law enforcement. Take GED Match, for example. So GED Match is a site where, not where you send in your own swab and get tested, it's where you take the testing information from one site and you can upload it to GED Match and GED Match takes that DNA information and tries to match you with other relatives. So this was used by law enforcement to find the Golden State Killer a while back. It's wonderful that he was apprehended. I mean, nobody wants this, this serial rapist killer out there, but that was by using data that users did not even know that they were consenting to. Law enforcement was able to take the information from GED Match for all the users and try to match it up with a relative. That way they were able to figure out who the Golden State Killer was based on DNA evidence from a crime scene. So this basically tells us that anybody could be tracked via their DNA information if another family member has already updated their own DNA sequence information to GED Match. So even if I don't do that, if one of my family members did, then part of my DNA code, part of that is already up on GED Match, whether I like it or not, because a family member wanted to find out more about them. Now, the argument here is this is a good thing because we will catch criminals. I, I agree with that and I empathize with that, but if law enforcement has access, who's to say that government government entities do not also have access to this information. And it could be government access that you don't necessarily want to have access to that information in the first place. What if there is some kind of DNA matching website that had a malicious backdoor installed on it and a state-sponsored attacker or a government entity was just soaking up all this information about all these US citizens who didn't even know that this information was being leaked in the first place? How would you know unless the website that you're uploading this information to actually said something about a leak and who's to say that a company would ever know that there was a leak on their website. Oftentimes whenever there is some kind of malicious backdoor or a company gets hacked, they don't even figure it out until a few weeks later or even sometimes a few years later. It's kind of bad. Now when the whole Golden State Killer thing happened, GED Match did choose to create an opt-in profile option for users. So now you have the option to be included in those kind of search databases, or you can exclude yourself. But here's the catch. In November of 2019, a judge in Florida ruled that law enforcement officers could get a warrant to still get access to all of that information, even if you opted out. So that means that your opt out is a moot point. To make matters worse for GED Match, I know I'm using them as an example, but this is all based on merit. They later started up a partnership with this company called Verogen or Verogen. It's a company that made DNA indexing systems used by feds. It's called the National DNA Index System. It's managed by the FBI. So if you don't want your information accessed by the FBI, then you may not want your information uploaded to GED Match. Now, a lot of these DNA companies will say that your data is anonymous. It's not tied to you specifically. It's completely anonymous whenever we get the test results, etc., etc., or whenever we use it for genetic testing of future research. 
Uh, but the problem with that is DNA sequencing information can still be tied to you based on your zip code or based on your date of birth or even based on your login information. So who's to say that a company, if they wanted to use this information nefariously, uh, couldn't take that part of your information as well as your location or your date of birth and tie it all together and kind of figure out who you are. I believe that nothing is anonymous forever because there's always a way to take one piece of data and another piece of data and try to combine them to figure out who they belong to. There's always some kind of link and Facebook is really good at that kind of linking. To move on from GED Match and everything that they have been dealing with, I also wanted to mention that once your data is used for research or it's resold to a third party, it's almost impossible to retract that information. So in 2018, 23andMe partnered up with Big Pharma to use DNA to develop new drugs and new treatments. Now, if your DNA was already used for that research, and you didn't want it involved with Big Pharma, well, it's already out there. So you couldn't retract that information once that research got started. Even though 23andMe does have a consent form that you have to sign if you want your DNA used in testing and research, once it's already used or it's being used in an active test, you cannot get rid of it but they do promise that it won't be used in future testing. It's also very hard to delete your DNA information once it is out there. Ancestry makes you contact their customer service department to delete DNA data. Same thing with MyHeritage because who's going to want to go through all of those loopholes to actually get your data deleted? Who has time to contact customer service and deal with it? There should just be an option on your profile that says delete my data and they delete your data. And of course, lastly, we do have the chance of attackers. We have malicious hackers. This is something that is a serious threat and a serious vulnerability to a lot of DNA testing websites and agencies. Attacks have already been shown to work against DNA database websites. So researchers have used the DNA upload process to upload, get this, malicious data that could search 90% of one of the sites and find matches. Now this could be used to search out people that might be under identity protection or find out about spies or diplomats or agents, people that need that identity protection. Or an attacker could create a fake profile and they could pretend to be a long lost relative of yours. Now, as of October, GED Match does not even have security consultants. It's a small business that's run out of a house, allegedly, according to reports. Uh, and then you also have companies like Veritas Genetics, which is a decent sized company here in California, a DNA testing company. They had a data breach in 2019, although the DNA genome sequencing was kept on a separate server, but still user information was leaked in this case. So if I have not made my point crystal clear from this video, I don't think I could do anything to make it even more clear than I already have. I don't believe that I am being paranoid in any sense. I read about security issues every single day for my show on Hack 5 called Threatwire. I mean, this is just a part of my life. It's part of my cycle of news. It's something that I just read about all the time. And I feel like a lot of times these articles do not get the consumer reading that they just deserve because this kind of information affects everybody, not just the people that upload the data, it also affects family members and relatives. So it's very important what kind of information Information we're putting out there and it's important that we understand what we're giving up when we choose that convenience to learn about our past or learn about our health. As I said before, you cannot change your DNA data. Once it is there, once you are born, that is your DNA. That is your DNA sequence. It is something that you live and you die by. It's not something that you can change like a password. And you can't just delete your profile and start over. You can't start over with your DNA genome sequencing information. And until you die, it does not expire. And if you have children, they have very similar DNA information too. So that doesn't even die with you. It don't expire. It doesn't expire like a 60 day password change request from your company or something like that, which also shouldn't be a thing. So DNA is so important that we, we should be keeping it private, but all of these third party companies want us to share this information with them to build their libraries and give you more knowledge about yourselves. But 
I just, I, I worry so much about the security issues with this entire, entire genre and this entire culture. So at this point of the video, I do want to apologize because if I have made you throw out a Christmas present, I'm sorry. Uh, but also just be safe in the knowledge and be secure in the knowledge that you're not giving somebody something that could end up hurting them in the future because of security issues and privacy issues that are involved with this. We have no regulations other than Gina. We have no regulations or no laws that are really verifying what these companies can and cannot do with that information. If their terms of service say they can sell it, they can sell it. And that's such a huge privacy issue. So I know this video was pretty serious, uh, but I did want to mention that next week I do have some pretty exciting videos coming out that are very cheery. So hopefully you'll stick around for those too and I didn't chase you away, but I hope you enjoyed this. And if you do have any questions or comments or you want source material, those are in the description. Leave your comments below. I would love to get involved with the conversation around DNA testing and see what you think too. And see if I changed your opinion as well. This is a pretty serious subject, so so I know that it's something that we could discuss and maybe debate about. So like and subscribe if you want to hear more about this in the future, if you want to hear about the news about DNA testing or security and privacy as well. I love that kind of stuff. Uh, thank you so much. My name is Shanna Morse. Thank you to my s'mores. Make sure to stick around for the awesome videos that are coming up and I will see you next time. Bye.